Hey there, this is a quick tutorial about how to access your XBMC debug log file uh, using an alternative method. The, uh, the big thing here is if you've ever been asked for a debug log file, you know sometimes it's not easy to get to. But there's a really easy to use uh, add-on that I've got right here, XBMC log uploader. And that'll upload your debug log file, which is kind of like a black box of information that helps us uh, find out any errors or what went wrong. And it takes that file from your computer and sticks it on the internet. Now, sometimes you don't want to do that right away. Sometimes there's sensitive information in your debug log file, or you just want to look at it personally first. Uh, normally, we are able to sanitize a lot of passwords and st stuff so that it's not in there, but sometimes things can still creep in. So if you do use sensitive network passwords, especially for like your, your file shares, it's never a bad idea to check your log just to make sure that's not recorded in there because you are posting it to the internet. Now, most people uh, on, say, a desktop can get to the debug log file using the their their desktop but if you're on say Android you know that you need to be rooted to access certain XBMC files which can be an issue for some people so you can not access the, the log file which is just a text file um, you can't access it normally and you don't want to use the debug log uploader add-on so that leads us to what I'm going to show you right now and that is the XBMC file manager and this guy is a great move this guy here. This guy is a great tool. It's been mostly unchanged uh, since the Xbox days. It's, it's a very basic remote control friendly way to manage your files. There's an A panel and a B panel. And right now they're the same, but we can change the two to point to different folders or hard drives or network shares. And whatever's on the first A panel can be copied to whatever's on the B panel. Uh, so for our specific example, we're going to add source and go right into that. Instead of, instead of going in the browse, we're going to go right into this guy here and just type it in. And we're going to type in special log path. This is a special URL which uh, XBMC uses to overcome uh, multiple operating systems because the log file is stored in different places on different operating systems. But using the special path we know we're always going to get to the right folder for our debug logs. So we're going to add that right there. Now of course I want to get the log file and for that there's a few ways you can add another source here uh, just as you would for videos you could add like a network file share to a server that you have easy access to copy the log file to there and go grab it or you can even just insert a USB drive and an XBMC there we go that should pop up automatically in the file manager and there it is a data pro is my USB drive and you can actually see I did a log file already you bring up the contextual menu when you selected a file or folder and you've got these various options like I'm going to delete this old file here it gives you a warning don't ignore these warnings so if you delete a file through this interface it will delete the file uh, not to scare you too much so anyways, as you can see, it doesn't really matter which panel you do this on because um, you can copy from B to A, A to B, but on the B panel, I'm going to open up my USB drive. On my A panel, I'm going to go into that log path, and you can actually see there's a whole bunch of other stuff. This, these are all things that are in the folder that contain the XBMC log, which will be different depending on the operating system you're using. I'm currently using Mac OS X, so uh, that's why you're seeing all these weird files here. But we go down, and sure enough, there are our log files. 
there's the currently recording log file and then xbmc old.log is the previous uh, time xbmc was open. You can copy one or both, whatever you need. We bring up the contextual menu. Uh, on a keyboard it's pressing C on most remote controls, it's uh, the menu button. And we can copy. So it, it assumes anything that I'm selected as to copy on the A panel, it's going to assume that the place I want to copy it to is the B panel. And there it is. And so just like that, I have taken my log file and put it onto the USB drive, which I can easily access. I can do the same thing with a file share, like I mentioned. I can do it in another location on the same computer or device. Like if you are on Android and there is a, a file area that you, you do have access to without root, you can just copy it straight within the device using this method. And that's the pretty much uh, the, uh, the basic concept there. Real quickly, you can see uh, this, this should show up as default profile directory. This is, as you can see up here, another special uh, URL. And this gives you access to your user data folder. And if you've ever needed to get into things, uh, your advanced settings, the XML file, if you ever needed to reset or copy a file, or even let's say you want to back up the whole thing, this is another way to access it. Using the same method we just used to copy the log file, we can, uh, we can actually go in, select the profile directory. No, no, we can't do that. Excuse me there. Uh, we should be able to copy all of this though. Select all. And you can copy it. I'm not actually going to copy it, but this would be one way to back up your user data folder uh, in an easy way if you can't physically access the files normally. So there you go. And there's all sorts of, of neat tricks you can do with the file manager. It's a great way, especially when you don't have access to a graphical interface, a desktop, to copy files. It's very remote control friendly, so you don't have to go into the other room uh, to copy a file. You can use it to copy video files. You can use it to rename things quickly, delete things quickly. And there you go.